started trading again, I will be recording this re this webinar this morning. Let me get my words straight. Um, to begin with, I want everyone to read over the risk disclaimer and hypothetical performance disclosure. The most important thing is not to trade with money you cannot afford to lose. All trading, whether it's futures, forex, or binary options, involves risk. So it's not for everybody, okay? So just take a minute, read over the disclaimer, and then we'll get started. I am recovering from laryngitis, so my voice sounds uh, a little bit funny. I apologize for that. And just a reminder, this is not a trade along with Gail room. This is an educational room. I am your teacher, okay? So sometimes I will take a trade just to show you this trade will lose money, and we knew that on entry. And I'm doing a lot of different things. So, you know, sometimes I just enter the wrong trade. All right, let's get started. Now, we've had some really good binary signals on the euro. Basically, the euro's been moving down all night. Um, I did take both a short position last night using binary options and spreads, and they both actually made money. We just had a signal. Can everybody see these red dots here? That tells you there was a signal there, okay? And it was a one-hour binary, and it closed in the money, okay? Um, we also had one on the USD JPY. And let me give it a minute to change over. On the USD JPY, this was your entry signal and it closed in the money. So both of those made money this morning. Okay, now for trading this morning, if there's any trades that come in, I will be using a Nadex demo account. You know it's a demo account because it's green up here in the header area, okay? And again, I'm your teacher this morning. I'm not your trade along with Gail person. Um. In this case, I do think the USD JPY may be going down, but the entry is not there yet. I do want to go back and show you on the Euro. It was just, a, actually, it's uh, it was on the USD JPY too, but. Okay. Um, on this one, ignore these red lines as an indicator that I'm actually working on right now. But we're going to just look at is price making lower highs and lower highs in the stochastics. And I'm going to show you here, if you connect the highs from here to here, in here to here. I mean, really, with the stochastics, it can be as simple as connecting the dots. Do you notice how in the stochastics you're making higher highs? And in price you're making lower highs? That's called hidden divergence, okay? And that is a great indication that the market was going to continue down. Okay, it should not have done that. Okay, both of these should have followed one another. For example, here, you're making lower highs, and from here to here, you're making lower highs. That is what you would expect the market to do. 
when you see a higher high in the stochastics and a lower high in price, that tells you more likely than not the market's going to go down. And that's really a great entry point. Any questions on that? That's one of my favorite entries, okay? Can you get that on every single entry you take? No, you can't. But overall, the euro has been moving down. Now, we may see it, you know, retrace some this morning. And the reason that I say that is because you're overextended on this ADX and you're overextended on the stochastics. That typically means that it's going to retrace back to this little plus sign here, okay? If you also notice, I have uh, it's called a radar screen, and at a glance, I can see where all of my time frames are. Now, TradeStation and MultiCharts both have this scanner-type window, okay? And I'm just going to go through it real quickly. Um, you can see right now, I know it's oversold on the Euro 60-minute. And that's really, if you look down this column, which is measuring the stochastics value, you can see that the euro is the only one that's actually oversold, okay? I can also see that I've got a pivot low here. I've got a pivot high here. Now, we also have a column that tells me if I have volume divergence, here, and this would be trend divergence. In other words, if price is making lower lows because everything's red this morning, is volume increasing on those lows? If it's not increasing on those lows, then it will come up and say volume divergence. Now, the next column that I'm actually looking at is the ADX. Anytime the ADX gets above this red line, which is at 70, it's going to show me the value here. So again, I notice that the euro dollar is overextended on both the stochastics and the ADX. Is there any other markets that's overextended? No. The euro yen, yeah, it's getting close. Not quite there yet. Okay. We then have pullback volume divergence here. And, of course, there's nothing listed there right now. But if price was retracing to the ATR and it got within X amount of ticks of the ATR and there was volume divergence, it would come up and tell me I have volume divergence in this column. I can also measure the trend according to the previous bar and the current bar. How many ticks away from the ATR is price at the current moment. All of my entries are at an ATR. Very important information for me. I can also see when I'm in congestion. Now, congestion is exactly what you saw right here. You have a blue plus sign and a white dot right here. That tells me that the market is moving in a congestion pattern. The only time I can take a trade when that occurs is if price is at its congestion dot, which is the white dot, or is at the ATR. You can also see that it tells me if price is at the ATR or price is at a congestion dot. And this is an input that I actually set that says, okay, if I'm within 10 ticks of the ATR, I need to start looking at the trade setup to see if I want to enter it or not. So I simply put 10 ticks in there, and any time price is within 10 ticks or whatever number I put in there, it will tell me, hey, price is getting close to this area. 
okay? And that means simply I need to go look at my trade. Any questions on that? A lot of information within one easy screen. Now, we will be focused on 4X until probably about 9 o'clock. Then we'll switch over and trade futures. And if you look at my futures, you can see it's pretty much identical to what my setup is in 4X. The only difference is I'm using a 12, a 45, and a 180 as my major charts on futures. Whereas on Forex, I'm doing a 15-minute, a 60-minute, and a 240. But overall, it's not a lot of difference. Now, any questions this morning? Now, notice that the Euro Yen is close to the ATR. You can see that price is at 77. And the ATR is at 87 on the 15-minute chart. I want it to get as close to this ATR as possible. And then I want to read the stochastics. And I'd like to read the volume. In this case, it actually looks like it's going to go up to this ATR. You can see that the stochastics is overextended to the downside. Again, it's telling you that more likely than not, you're going to have a retracement on this particular currency. Let's go look at the Aussie dollar. On the Aussie dollar, you see that you're at this line of congestion dots. Also see that you've actually had what is referred to as trend divergence in the stochastics. You're making higher lows, but lower lows in price. So again, if you connect the dots here, okay, you're making lower lows, but higher lows in the stochastics. That usually is indicative that the market will go up. You can also see that you're at this ATR, okay, and you're almost at the point of being overextended. Do y'all see that? Now, the Aussie dollar moves relatively slowly um, during this time period, okay? And again, I'm going to put the disclaimer up because I'm going to try to enter a trade on the Aussie dollar. Again, this is in demo mode. I'm going to extend this out. And the first thing you want to do is say, okay, this is a 15-minute chart. Where is the reversal bar? Now, we did have a reversal bar here, but this is where we're at right now. Do y'all understand that? Now, the really cool thing about the Aussie dollar is it's only five pips from one strike to the other, okay? So, in this case, this is a weak bar. 
okay? I would like it if this bar closed up, but looking at this, I'm saying, I've got an hour and 44 minutes, and if it moves five pips up to 76.62, that would be a nice profit, because I'm only entering at $27. Do y'all see that? So I'm going to click that. I'm only going to do one contract, okay? If you can't make money with one contract, you're not going to make it with 10 either, okay? If you want to know how much it would make with 10, just multiply by 10. Relatively simple. And this has got an hour and 43 minutes. And it, it may go against us. If it goes against us, we lost $27. All right, let me move this off a moment because we are getting some signals on futures. Um, and this is one I personally would not be interested in taking, okay? And here's why. Volume is increasing. As this approaches the ATR, volume is increasing, okay? The stochastics is not around this green line, okay? And I would be going long, okay? You're not at that 20 line. Then when you look over here, you're overextended to the buy side. This is not a trade I would want to take right now. Now, it may make a new low and give you volume divergence. It may approach this 20 line, but right now, it is not there. The same probably on the NASDAQ. We'll have to see. No, the NASDAQ actually looks better. Except you do have the volume um, here. And you've already broken that ATR. So I'm not really interested on this. For a shorter time period, you are getting an entry over on the 45 minute. But again, to go long, you would want the stochastics to be down around the 20 line. It's not there. Does everybody understand that? The signals are telling me, hey, there's a potential trade here. But when I pull up that chart and I look at the chart, this is going to go down, okay? You're going against your trading time frame because this is on a daily. I don't want that trade. It's not a good trade setup. I'll stick with the Aussie. On the Aussie, if you notice, your volume was decreasing, okay? Stochastics is right down near the 20 line. You've got an ATR that may support price. To me, this was a better entry. See how your stochastics over here was down around 20? That's one that I would prefer, okay?
What I would like to see on the Aussie is for it to test 66. You see the line of congestion dots up here? It's on my wish list. I would like to see the current bar close above the high of this bar that was weak. I told you it was weak. It doesn't mean that it will do it. It just means it would be nice if it would do it. It's on my wish list. Sometimes the market does not care about my wish list. I'm going to go look at the euro dollar because it's at the ATR as well. And again, you know, if this comes back to this ATR, I'm not really interested in it, and I'll show you why. Number one, you're oversold over here, okay? And over here, you're making lower lows, but you're making higher lows in the stochastics. No. This is telling me there's a weakness there. This is telling me it is oversold. Okay. And I'm trying to go short. Okay. So I've got weakness in my trend, and I'm overextended on the 60 minute, which is one time frame above me, and I'm overextended on the 240. No. Not going to do that one. Let me change this back here. Let's go look at the Euro Yen. We can also look at the British Pound. Again, you're seeing potential uh, weakness in this trend. Do you see how you're making higher highs, lower highs here? You're overextended over here. You know, these are the trades I don't want to get into right now.
really want to see what this bar does at the close. I want to see whether it can close above the high of this bar. I definitely don't want it to close on the low. If you notice on the chart, you see this line of blue dots, very, very faint. Um, I'll actually increase the size for you. So we're one. Now you can see them a lot clearer. Do you see how this line of blue dots is acting as support right at the ATR? That's usually a good sign. Don't rely solely on that. It's telling me I need to read the price bar, okay? Does everybody understand that? And on this one, I did buy time. Yeah, exactly the same. These are telling me to read off of the high one. Do you see how it came back and it tested it? But it couldn't break through that line of dots? Same thing. Now, I keep them real small because... Um, I usually can do it before the dots do, but I added this in, you know, in case traders couldn't do that. And I really don't like the way this bar is closing. You know, I don't want it to close on the downside. I want it to close up, but we'll have to wait and see. See how you got two closes exactly the same? You know, I don't particularly like this. You know, I can actually exit with only $7 of risk instead of, what was it, 27 that we had? We had $27 worth of risk. You know, if you wanted to scratch it, you could actually scratch it at this point. You know, it's, it's not given a real clear picture. You can also wait for it to come down to 76.54, but this is the trade-off. If you wait for it to get to 76.54, you might have suffered a full loss on this, okay? Yeah, they're the same whether it's multi-charts, whether it's trade station, or whether it's Ninja Trader. And if you don't know your reversal bars, okay, um, I don't have it plotted on mine, but the trend SR1 will even show you the reversal bars. Um, it's a setting in the trend SR. Plot reversal bar, if you set that to true, it's going to give you a yellow dot on the reversal bars, see? So if you're not sure what a reversal bar is, it will actually give it to you here. And it is based on three bars. Just like the cheat sheets, it's using three bars, okay? So if you look at this one and you say, well, it didn't plot a dot. Well, this bar is not higher than three bars. This is one, two, three, okay? It's just an isolated high in the middle of nowhere.
And some of these are actually covered up with the magentas. So, I don't like to see that because I know reversal bars. But if you're learning reversal bars, you know, I put the tools in there for you, okay? Okay, while we're waiting on this, I'm going to go grab me another cup of coffee and I'll be back. On the longer term time frame, you think the Aussie dollar is overbought? It is over here on the weekly. And typically, see how you have this line of congestion dots, Tim? That usually is indicative that it will come back and test this ATR. Okay? So I think probably for the week, I think you're right. We're going to look at downward movement on the Aussie. So for a longer term trade, you're probably right. A weekly would be good. And this is where you can say, okay, now more likely than not, okay, it's going to retrace, okay? So what I would be doing is looking for a potential on a weekly and we'll just pull that up and okay let's go out a little bit there we go I would let it move up some and 76.25 it's going to be within 50 pips I would let it move up and then target the 76.25 I do think we're going to have some upward movement before the down move comes in And you could probably, and sometimes this is what I do because, for example, today I've got a webinar and then I've got to write some articles. Tomorrow I've got another webinar 
and I'm working on a book. So, you know, either I would put this on my watch list, Tim, or I would come in here and say, okay, I want to sell, but I want it to get up around 75. Do you see that? and then just place the order. One thing I want to go over, because I've had a lot of questions about this, okay, is people don't understand what they're actually making. When you enter the original order, this is your original order, your max loss is right here. Your max profit is right here. Read the ticket, okay? And I'm not being you know, smart alecky or anything like that, but read your ticket, okay? It really helps to understand that on the sell side, price is depreciating, okay? In other words, price is going down from 100, okay? Payout is the same, okay? You will still, if price closes under 76.25, the indicative price, then you will still get paid 100, okay? It can even be equal to this price, 76.25, okay? On the buy side, it is appreciating from zero. So this is zero down here. This is 100 up here, okay? The significance of this statement is that if I was to buy this, okay, I would expect it to go to 100. That means my risk is $71. I never take trades like that, okay? On the sell side, I want this to move up here to 75. That's why I have 75 here, okay? And then I would probably set a target down here at 15. What is the difference between 75 and 15? 60. So if my profit target is achieved, I would make $60. What would my risk have been? The difference between 75 and 100. Or, as the ticket shows, $25. And I do a lot of these because sometimes I just, I'm not willing to sit here and watch this go up to 75. So I just come in and say, okay, if it gets to 75, just go ahead and enter and then I'll check it. You see how the box is gray? The gray box tells me the order has not been filled. In other words, it's a working order. Okay. Now, you can see working orders right over here. There's the working order. Okay. If this pops up to 75, it's going to enter. Does everybody understand that? In this one, we're just waiting. We have an hour and 18 minutes. The This is called um, pretty much one of the high gamma trades, okay? And the reason it's high gamma is because the Aussie dollar does not move very much typically during this time period. Notice that the buy is right at 30 on that one, and it's 45 here. The difference is about $15. Okay, so when this moves, there's a difference in premium of about $15. This is what's considered a higher gamma trade, okay? If you pull up, for example, the euro dollar, the euro dollar you can get high gamma usually during the Asian session, okay? Um, 
but during the U.S. session, you cannot. Let's go and look at the same one, 8 to 10 a.m. We're going to do it on the euro dollar this time. Okay. So if I expand these strikes out. Oh, still has a how gamma. That's unusual. You don't normally see that. Do you see that trend? divergence on the stochastics here. Normally this would be about five to ten dollars. Okay. It's been a slow morning so that's probably why you're seeing it. It's not bad though. I'll stick to my little trade here. Again, it's trying to form that reversal bar to the upside. And the Aussie dollar is one you have to have a little bit of patience with. It moves really nice, but you have to have some patience. I am starting to develop some price pattern indicators. Um, the first one I'm doing is the pendants. I might do some flags. I don't know. I like price patterns. And for those of you that are trading the filter, uh, the binary signals, the filtered signal means both the stochastics is confirming the entry and prices at the ATR. And it will tell you filtered signal on that one. Um, there's been one over here on the British pound that came out about 15 minutes ago and um, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, in other words, you're getting close to this ATR here, okay, and the stochastics is approaching the point of being overextended, okay. Now, would I want to enter this signal? Looking over here, no, uh-uh. Because you're overextended here. You're trying to go short here. Now, it may work out, okay? It's not my favorite trade setup. Does everybody understand that? I want it to be overextended here because I'm trying to go short, right? The signal is saying short. Okay, because we're at this ATR, we're almost to the point of being overextended. Okay. When you look here, you're overextended. What I would want to see 
is that we're going into this time frame. Okay? We are not going into this time frame. I would want it to look more like this one. We are going into this time frame. Okay? But if this one dominates, you're going to lose. And if you didn't know all of that, the fact that you're at a floor trader pivot line should be a good clue. Normally what will happen, this will come down and make a higher low. That's the reason some of them will win because this is going to make a higher low. Okay. Now, if you took and you drew a line right off of this low, it's probably going to end up about here. Okay. That's where I would guess it to be. And that's just historically, that's what it will do. But again, not one that I'm interested in entering. Again, I'll just stay with my little Aussie. Now we had, this is a two bar reversal. This should not be happening, okay? It is intra bar. There's 11 minutes left until this bar ends, okay? I'm not jumping the gun. I'm saying, okay, it's got 11 minutes to prove to me that it is in fact going to be a reversal bar. Does everybody understand that? My favorite words. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> this little black box is showing you the indicative price index. All binaries are based on this indicative price index. That's the reason I keep it on my chart, because this tells me it's got to go from 57 to 62. Well, you know, I believe in saving money as much as possible. So if I can get, you know, the 76.25 for 25 bucks, you know, I'll enter that one. I don't know what it was last night. I wasn't looking at it, Tim. I was trading the euro last night. I knew the euro was, well, I didn't know. I anticipated that the euro would move down. And I got it. It was right at 75. But I did uh, 11 p.m. on that one. The 9 to 11. And it was about 25. Now, I do set profit targets. And last night was a great example of why I do that. My profit target was filled on the euro about 15 minutes before expiration. When it, it popped down below 78, I believe was what my strike was. And it popped down below it, filled my target 
and then popped back up to 79. It was just enough for my strike to be filled. And then it, it expired, you know, against me, but I had made a profit on it, which is why I set profit targets. And this one is really struggling. Go look here. You've just had hidden divergence on the Dow. Now, I'm going against this time frame. I'm telling you right now, I'm going against one higher time frame. But I want to see... If there's a cheap binary, to the upside. Let me look at something else. Now this is a little bit iffy. And this is when I say, okay, I don't really want to risk a lot because this is a little bit iffy. But I think it'll take out this high at 67. Okay, because it's iffy, I don't really want to risk a lot of money on this. So I'll come in and do a spread for $12. And that way, okay, I can live with a $12 loss if I'm wrong because this is a little bit iffy. And this is is a spread it is not a binary okay and what I did was buy the floor okay there's two components on a spread you've got the floor 
and then you have the ceiling, okay? So your floor is down here, and your ceiling is up here. Now, this is why most traders don't understand spreads. What is the ceiling going to do? It's going to act as resistance, okay? In other words, it's going to restrict price. The floor is actually going to act as support. Everybody understand that? What does that mean? It means you always buy the floor. And you always sell the ceiling. Okay, now I already know that the indicative is at 650.6. .6. It tells me that right here, okay? So look for the spread that is closest to that number I want to buy so I know that the floor has to be at 20. Six, five, zero. Does everybody understand that? Now, the worst case scenario, and again, it comes back to reading your ticket. If I try to buy, well, let's say that I tried to buy the ceiling. Okay, your max loss is 93, your max profit is 7. Does that make sense to you? It's $2 round trip, okay? So that's going to give you a profit of $5 if you're right. Does that make sense? It does not make sense to me. I would not do that. You see, it's it's still struggling. In this little bitty area, it is still struggling. Do y'all see that? Now, on the spreads, guys, y'all can pull up a chart. It's not going to show you where you entered at. So in this case, this is your chart, and if I come down here, I can see my average price was 62. So if you go to drawings, go to horizontal line, snap it right on there, you can actually see, okay, this is where, you know, my entry was. Okay, where's my stop? It's not really a stop, but this is what limits my loss is 20.60.50. So I cannot lose more than that. So this is the limit of loss from 60 to 50. Twelve dollars. It's a dollar a point. If the indicative expires within this area then I only lose to the expiration value. Let's say that at expiration is at 26.60. Okay, I would have lost $2.
I wish they had daily spread. I mean, uh, weekly spreads. If they had weekly spreads, that would be the time. If you think there's a big move coming, you would do a weekly spread, but they don't have those, unfortunately. Let's go see what gold is doing. It looks like crude might actually go down. You're overextended on all the higher time frames on crude. You're overextended, 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 overextended. You're above 80. So it looks like in your at a congestion dot. My bet would be that crude will go down. Okay. We're going to watch the Aussie until the U.S. Open. And then we'll see what happens at the Open. I'm going to go take a quick break and be back.
Okay, the Aussie, <clears throat> excuse me, the Aussie's trying to move in our favor. And I'm going to go ahead and set a profit target. Now, I know I'm long because it says plus one. I have to go up in price. So I'm going to set a profit target at 85. If the premium on this gets to 85, and it's up here at the 76.62, if the sale gets to 85, then if there's a seller there, it will fill the order. And most of the time, if you're trading, you know, 10 contracts or less, I don't really see any problem getting filled, okay? In general. But it also depends on the market that you're trading, okay? If you're trading, for example, soybeans, I don't trade soybeans, so you have to watch it and make sure there's enough buyers and sellers in that market to be filled with the number of orders that you are trading. Usually on the majors, you know, for Forex, you don't have a problem. Okay, I want to pop over and look at the NASDAQ because we just got a signal on the NASDAQ. And it's telling me to sell. Do you see how the stochastics is just like in the middle? Is it confirming a sale? You know, the last bar had a lot of buy-in volume on it. No, I'm not going to take that one. Good morning, Dinesh. Uh, right now, it's telling me that's a sell signal. See where it says binary signals, two hours sell at um, 53.38.75. That's pretty much where that red dot is. Uh, the red dot on the Aussie dollar. You're making a new high when compared to the last three bars. If it was an actual new high, then it would be magenta. Do you see that? You had magenta here. You had magenta here. But the red tells me there is a, another high that is nearby that was higher. Yeah, it's the Trend SR, Dinesh. It does exactly the same thing.
And if you want to know why I bought time on the Aussie, and this is typical of the Aussie, I'm going to blow this up so you can see. Do you see these little gaps in this price? Okay, this closed here, it opened down here. This closed up here, but it opened down here on this bar. Do y'all see that? Okay, we just had another gap over here. Yeah, that tells me I need more time. It's really simple things sometimes. But I knew, I, I know automatically that the Aussie moves slower. So usually I will buy more time. Now if the signal comes out, it's going to use a standard one hour expiration, okay? Even the euro could be a slow move in market, okay? And that's just a real easy way to say, hey, this is a slow move in market. You might want to buy some time. You don't need to change a parameter. You need to insert the trend SR. Wait a minute, now I'm bringing it up. Yeah, it is gappy. That's what I call it. Gappy. I don't like gappy charts. It just tells me the market's moving too slow. You know, um, you need to actually buy time if you're going to trade it. But it also means that it's noisy, and I don't like noisy charts. Okay, there it is on the uh, Ninja Trader platform. Do you see? And there's not, because this is a white background, you may want to change that magenta color. Let me make sure you can. I don't remember if we let you change that one or not. Yeah, you can't change that one. It's coded in. But you could change the red to dark red, and then uh, on the dark blue, it's it's going to be evident. 
so now you see more of a difference. Now you can also change the plot width on that. We have it set to one pixel. Um, again, the bigger it is, the more it bothers me. So let's do three. And OK. Now do you see how evident it is? I mean, it's still there. We're doing exactly the same thing. Okay, it's just a difference. The magenta tells me that it is a higher high than the last high that I measured. A magenta low tells me it's lower than the previous low that I measured. That's the reason this one is blue, because this is the last low on the chart that has dots. Okay, and this was a higher low. This one is a lower high because the last high that was measured with a dot was this one, okay? But this is a new high because the last high was here. And you do not see me use these dots very much but I probably have more experience trading my methodology than you do. So some of the tools I put in there are for you only because I realize you may not see what I see. So I programmed it into the indicators, okay? Very seldom do you see me with these big dots because they bother me. I don't need to see them. I already know they're there. There's a lot of different ways to use those dots, Dinesh. Um, for example, do you see how these dots formed right at the ATR? 
Okay, the first thing that that is telling you is it has developed support in that area for the time being. Okay, um, another way you can use them if you don't know trend definitions. Okay, well, connect your dots. You know, if you have a dot here and a dot here, you know, this was your downtrend. Okay. Well, are you making a downtrend now? Uh, not really. Okay. You're making, you were making lower highs and lower lows, but now you're making higher lows. Okay. The key to this is whether they make a new high here. Okay. I mean, if you want to see where the support or where the resistance is, you know, look at your dots. Was this one able to take out this one? No, this trend is probably in trouble at the time being. Okay. They need a retracement. How far will it retrace? Well, that's the million dollar question. Yeah, you know, normally what you actually see me do, and I did this earlier, is I think it will come back to this area at 76.63 minimum, okay? Well, my strike price is at 76.62, okay? It's a potential target. You know, if I was going short over here, where is it likely to go? It should take out the last low, 76.49. A lot of times what you'll see me do is, okay, I expected this, and right now it's going here. And over here, it's doing this, okay? That's a pennant formation. The same as what you see on the red lines over here. This is automatic. This one I have to draw. Let's go see what futures are doing. I really like to uh, limit my risk on entry when I'm in the market prior to the U.S. Open because the U.S. Open can screw up anything. They'll spike it down and then spike it right back up. Or they'll spike it up so they can spike it back down.
you know, more than likely crude's going to come down. I think I said that earlier as well. You'll really like the seminar, Dinesh, because, I mean, all we do pretty much all day long. And see, again, this is where, okay, I think crude's going to go down today, and I can actually get a spread for $11 on crude that's pretty cheap why do I think it's going to go down because you're overextended 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 you've got three time frames overextended and you're at a congestion dot on the 720 usually that's gonna push it down Uh, do I record the seminars? No, I don't. Or the seminars only held in South Carolina. Actually, it's North Carolina, Christopher. And I might have one in Las Vegas, you know, towards the end of the year. Um, but generally, yeah, I tend to stay close to home. Um, I take care of my mother. And I don't like going out of town. She's, she'll be 77 this year. So I kind of like to stick close to home. Now on the crude, again, if you wanted to graph that one, it's not giving me the option. So I can't graph that one. Oh, let me go to this one. This one is giving me the option. So I can pull it up here. And basically we're going to do the same thing on this one. If it loads, and it's not going to load for me, but this is one I can actually put over on my chart. <clears throat> it's at 54.39, and this is a daily, okay, so it's going to be down here. And I'm short there, and my risk is limited to 54.50. And that just tells me at a glance, okay, what's going on. And I really don't try to micromanage these at all. Because you've already limited your risk to eleven dollars. Well, I think it's a privilege to Dinesh. And I always, yeah, you know, it might sound terrible, but if, uh, you know, when your parents get to be the age of my mom, every day I get with her is a blessing. So I try not to go out of town too much.
oops, sorry about that. Um, Keith, with the 4X data, okay, you don't get true volume, you get tick count, okay? So unless you have this chart active, you won't necessarily see the true portrayal of the delta, especially in TradeStation. So what you can do is insert the future contract, which I just did. If I go to format symbol, you see I have the Aussie dollar, 60 minute, but I hit it, okay? But what I do is take the volume indicator and I set it to read the 60 minute. And that way you're getting a true volume picture versus a tick count. But the downfall of that is like the Euro Yen, you can't do that on. Um, British Pound Yen, you can't do that. You can do it on the Aussie, the Euro, the British Pound, the USD Yen, and the USD Canadian. Now the USD Yen is going to be the opposite, which kind of screws that up, and so will the Canadian. So as long as you know that, you're okay. Does that make sense to you, Keith? Okay, you can see the Aussie spike down at the open. Now it's going back up. Okay, you've only got 13 minutes until expiration. If you were unsure of this or you were worried over losing $27, you could exit. Okay, I'm just going to let it run. Remember on the... Wall Street, we only paid $12 for that, and right now you've made about 20 so you've doubled your money. Could you exit that? Sure. You could just leave it and see where it closes. I don't like that bar that's forming, but, you know, that's intra-bar.
I want to come over and check the working order. It's about five dollars from that weekly working order. Now, if the sale price gets to eighty five and there's a seller, then that order will be executed. Now, notice that I don't have profit targets on the spreads. You can set profit targets on them. I just let them run. Typically, you increase your risk to reward ratio using the spreads. And we're out of the Aussie. So we entered that for 27. We exited at 85. That was a nice risk to reward trade. And we're still in this one. We've doubled the money on the Wall Street. You see how they're coming back to that ATR here? They may even come back to this ATR. Just don't know. And this is one with the three minute being overextended. This is where I say, ah, I'm going to take my profit. You know, I don't want to lose the profit that I made. I wanted to get 92. Let's see if you'll get it. Yeah, I got 92. So we were risking $12 on that and we made 30. It's not a bad risk to reward ratio. We're still waiting on crude. <clears throat> See how you got the little magenta dot there? Now, it should come back and test this ATR, okay, especially because we're overextended on this time frame and we're at a congestion dot overextended over here. That one, I'm out until 2.30, so I'm not going to obsess over it. You also see that sellers came in on this bar. It's moving up. Let's 
Well, we just have to wait for a new setup now. And every time you see price at an ATR, that's showing you a potential entry. So there's a lot of trades that go off in a day. Um, the euro is starting to go up, I think. And see, this is why I did not want to take this entry on the euro because I already anticipated that it should go up because the trend was weak. Do y'all understand that? You don't want to go into a weak trend. If you go from here to here, and then you go from here to here, this is hidden divergence to the upside. Do y'all see that? That bar does not complete until 1 o'clock this afternoon. Do I think that it's going to go up? <laughs> Yeah, because you blow through all the floor trader pivots. That's the reason I exited my position this morning, because I had a spread on that. And I was trading 10 contracts in, I don't know, maybe, can't remember what my risk was. But by the time I got up this morning, I had made 50 bucks per contract. And I said, okay, time to get out. Why? Because it was going to take my profit. I ain't giving my profit back, man. And I think it was right around 6 o'clock, so it must have been here that I exited. So from 37 to 25, I missed. whoop de doo you know. I don't need to get out at the bottom or get out at the top. I just need to lock in a profit. Here you see the weakness in the trend, weakness in the trend. On the USDJPY. These are the moves that we anticipated last week, Dave. Oh, yeah. Look. You were right at that ATR. There was a pretty entry. And again, you see the trend divergence, okay? We are overextended here. Trend div here. Trend div here. Yeah, these are the ones too, Dave, you can do some really good spreads on. Yeah, when all three of them line up, it's sweet. 
All right, so this was the end of the Dow, okay, and this expired at 2684. Well, I exited at 2692, so it was a smart exit. Do y'all see that? Did it go a little bit above that? Sure it did, okay? But it was a weak bar. You know, I'm not giving back my profits. You have to work for them. So any questions this morning, guys? So far, we've done three trades. Two have been very profitable. One is out until the end of the day. Y'all can keep up with it. Well, thank you, Christopher. Now, tomorrow, I will be doing a Nadex binary option webinar. And it's really going to be focused on understanding drawdowns and money management, which is why I like trading binary options, because it makes you think about it a little bit better, especially as a new trader. And I'll send out a link today with um, an email today with the link to that presentation. Any questions? If not, I will be back. Next Tuesday, same time, same place. Of course, if anybody has uh, any questions, they can always email me. I do try to respond to my emails within 24 hours. Typically, it's about an hour. <laughs> All right, everybody have a wonderful day. I will post this video later today. Um, and have a great day.